All right, <laughs> let's get started. So I want to go ahead and go over to our progress we get for our first sprint. First thing is I want to talk about our completed stories. As you notice, there's not really a lot of writing. I like to talk, so bear with me here. Um, first thing we did was the team orientation of Python. Now, basically what this came down to was because we decided to implement our project in Python, and we did kind of a little bit of self-evaluation, a lot of our team members are not that familiar with Python. So we thought that it was prudent that we learn about the fundamentals of Python before we get started. You know, we should walk before we run, that kind of stuff. So actually, this story was something that all of us took on. It wasn't just a single person. We all completed introductory material to familiarize ourselves with Python. That way, everyone is on the same level going forward. Uh, we also researched string encryption decryption techniques since a big part of our project is about encrypting our data before we send it to a recipient. Now this covers basic, very fundamental uh, or very rudimentary techniques such as the Caesar cipher, reverse cipher, as well as more complicated library-based uh, modules for encryption such as the DES module for Python. And our idea is that we're going to incorporate multiple encryption techniques into our messages instead of just one. That way it's more perilous to attack, so the attacker you know, decrypts one method, they still have many more layers of security to go through. An ensemble method. That's yes. What it's called. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so this is our first <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, we, we, you we, know, we, they're just, you know, we, we like to think that we're kind of a, a slow, you know, a slow build up, or we're, we're ramping up the progress. Yeah, ramp up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it, you don't want to look too hard into this, you know, even though it's only, you know, a couple of points, but what I wanted to say was that, you know, our story was done by every single member of our team, yeah. you know, so a five point story distributed amongst all five members is, more like 20. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're wrapping things up as we go along, you know, and plus also the point, um, you know, is something that we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, determine like what exactly constitutes a point. And right now we're sitting more along the side of point is a work day, and we're going to be refining that metric as we get to know our output. So our backlog stories, uh, even though these are just two sentences, they're actually very, very big issues. The first thing that we want to talk about is our GUI library research. Uh, we're using TK um, for Python. Now, TK uh, designing a front end is different than designing a back end because the programming paradigm is event based programming. And that's something that all of us have to wrap our mind around. You know, it's not just enough to know Python fundamentals, it's also about how to program a GUI in Python. We have to design GUI for not only our user clients, but also our database administrative clients. And that means designing two separate interfaces you know, that we need to learn how to do. And the second thing is our socket programming slash server setup. Now we're designing our own web service in the sense that we're designing our own server and that these servers will be communicating with other clients via TCP socket, uh, uh, TCP socket uh, communication. Now the thing about that is that our team will need to understand how the TCP works as well as how this TCP programming works in Python, because now there's also additional socket programming component in Python that we have to get ourselves familiar with. And that involves a lot of asynchronous programming where the code does not flow sequentially according to, uh, according to, the, according to the source code, but rather based on the different sockets interacting with the server. And we're anticipating many, many clients communicating with the server all at once. So our code needs to be able to support all of that. So that's something we also need to wrap our head around at, uh, at a later time. Does Python allow multi-threading? It does. <laughs> so, some possible risks that we've identified thus far uh, tentative to change. One is the integration database with the rest of the project. Now we, you know, uh, this is a requirement that we use a database component, so we're using it for our server. Not only is it needed for user credential verification, but also chat history as well as messaging queues in case that another client is not immediately available to receive this. Um, we're still trying to, tr trying to fill out you know, what kind of database we want to use as well as how to integrate it with all the rest of our features. So that could possibly blow up in complexity, but it's something we'll be tackling very, very soon. Um, more generic things are such as you know, sporadic looks throughout development. We're not perfect programmers. We're gonna run into some issues programming and our, you know, our intent is to identify folks quickly and solve them quickly so that we're able to proceed developing at a constant pace. And lastly, just the time to complete the project, 
there's a lot of there's a lot of very fuzzy you know areas but you know some features that we'd like to implement but given the fact that we only have roughly 60 days of school left it's very possible that we're not able to you know get this thing complete to 100 percent satisfaction the way we envision at the very beginning uh, let's, let's take a look at the use cases by the way is it internship no nope. okay so this is the first use case we have this interaction of users and the modules and the admin right. the modules are used so we know the first part is basically you have to create a login. So user basically has to enter the username after that and the password. And admin has to check and validate that the username and the password is correct indeed. And if it is correct, then it allows users to send messages and receive messages. And admin allows users to do that. So next use case. So this is basically the use case between user and modules and encryption and modules. So users has to have sender information who is it going to send the message to. And then at the same time, it also has to send and receive messages between users. And then encryption has to take place of the messages. So message submission and message text is going to be encrypted. Because when you say, if I'm sending a message to Will through um, Sockets, so I'm saying, hello, Will, that message is not going to go as in, hello, Will, because there's no encryption there. Right. So that message is going to go as in, like, dollar sign, asterisk, uh, exclamation mark, blah, 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 whatever. And that's what's going to go through. And once you receive it, then it's going to be decrypted, and he's going to be able to see, hello, Will. Next. It's not clear text. That's what they call clear text clear when it goes without encryption. And this, the third use case we have is basically the admins and the modules that admins going to be relating with. So the first part is basically it's going to admins going to have to store the user information in the database, and it's going to have to validate when the user login in that is it the correct user or is it incorrect. And then it's also going to have to basically take care of encryption and decryption in a way like think of it this way. So user will send a message to user admin. A user admin will basically decrypt the message and then store it into the database and then encrypt it again and then send it to the other user. And message storage is going to be done in the admin as well in the backend database. All right, let's take a look at the sequence diagrams. This is a very good one, by the way. So this is a sequence diagram between users, client, and database. So <coughs> you see it's pretty simple, straightforward. This we made a mistake, by the way. We told us that in the very first project, I think. So. So users basically logging in, and the client is taking the log information and sending it to the database, where the database checks if it's correct or incorrect. If it's correct, then you log in and the messaging starts. If it's, incor if it's incorrect, then it goes back and you have to log in again. And second sequence diagram is basically interacting between user, client, servers, and database for the sequences. So in this, here what you see is this is the user sending a message, and the client is basically encrypting a message, and the server is basically sending a message into the backend database where it's being stored. And if all of that works, the message is basically encrypted and stored in the database, then it's sent and decrypted, everything works. If none of these works, say the message is not stored properly, it's going to go back. And if there's encryption mistake, then it's also going to go back, and it's going to try again. So you're not sending back the message, you're just bubbling up an error or something? Yeah, it's an error. It's not going to be the exact message, it's going to be like error, send it again. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And So in this state diagram, actually she did a really good job, Francisca. And we, what we draw over here is basically how the user is going to basically do logging information and, and also like um, create an account. So we basically combine those two together. So what you see here is basically the user is going to try to like put in the username for login. And if it's correct, and it's going to validate to the database. If it's correct, then it's going to be like enter the password. User is going to enter the password and the database is going to check the password. If that is correct, you can be logged on and the messaging will start. And if that is incorrect, then it's going to go all the way back and you have to enter all of that again. Whatever is incorrect, I say the username or password, or to be both. <coughs> and likewise, when you create an account, you also have to know like three things, right? So you have, you have to enter a username that you, of your choice, and you have to make sure that a username is basically something that hasn't been used by anyone else. So you're going to have multiple users using the same account. And if it's not a username that's been used before, then you go to the next step, which is set up a password. And when you set up a password, you have to have requirements, right? So it can be something like, as in, like, uh, you have to have one uh, the capital letter, one number, or one special case. So if it meets the requirement, then you go to the next step, which is enter the email. And enter the email, why we did that is basically we're thinking of adding it. Because say, for instance, if you enter a username and password, if you're creating an account with a username and password, and say, for instance, you have registered an account and you forgot to basically, you forgot what your password was. What are you going to do? You're going to have to check your email, right? You're going to try to send, like, your forgot password. So it's going to send you an email, and you're going to send the email, and the email is going to send you, this was your password, or change your password, reset it. 
So just just one yeah. word of note here, when you've got create an account, you have that single line coming off create an account, down yeah. and then you have three decisions, the bottom part. Oh, the bottom can part. this miss leave? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm saying though is when you have something like that, that's not clear on does it go immediately into three different states of existence. So usually you have one state of activity at a time, unless you want simultaneous actions to occur. And you put a block, so it's a little confusing. So how are we supposed to put that, like one here and then? Well, you would put a, a block and you'd have three coming out into the three different diamonds versus one line doing like that. It's just semantics, well, mainly. Just, yeah, so but, this, but, 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 you but you want this to be a correct UML. Uh -huh. So you would have, coming out of create, you would have a vertical line and then three separate arrows coming out, not just one line with three yeah. drops on it. So I know it looks neater like this, but that's not correct UML. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put an order in that. Hmm? We'll put an order in that. We'll okay, yeah, I mean, but I'm just, just, you know, just when you get in the real world, if you see something like this, you're gonna be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, you're not gonna, and, and when you create one, you wanna be able to create it correctly. Okay. Okay. And this is the second uh, diagram we have. It's basically, a, uh, this one, we basically put the one we had before, and we split it into one, which is like <coughs> password and username authentication. Yeah, and so it's, another thing is when you have the fail, you don't, once the fail happens, nothing comes out of that. So there's never an output from failure. Or, well, you've got the X there, I'm assuming that's your terminate halt. Yes. Yeah, once you terminate halt, nothing can come out of that. Okay. You have to have from another box, another transition state. Okay. So, and that's okay, I mean, you guys are learning state diagrams, you should have learned some of this back in systems, but that's okay. That's all right. And that's pretty much it. Okay.